And speaking of that, one of the things that we wanted to talk about as far as the do-it-yourself goes is, you know, if you're not working with a publisher or a plugger, it's really difficult to gauge what do I pitch, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, as songwriters, these are our babies, and no one wants to hear you have an ugly baby. Trust me, I've got two kids. It's like the worst thing ever. <laughs> but my kids are beautiful, so I'd never hear that. But, and my songs are great, so I'd never hear that either. Ah, ha, ha. Anyway, um, like, I, I still find it, you know, I don't find it as difficult when I listen to other people's stuff, because, you know, we have catalogs right. of some writers here that, that right. you've pitched that I've pitched. <clears throat> It's, it's really easy to be objective when it's not your own stuff. That won't work, this will work, that won't work, that's a great song, it's a good idea, but the second verse isn't good. But when I listen to my own stuff, because I'm so close to it, it's really difficult, and you it's know, hard. because I, fortunately I have Chip to run stuff by. Chip, do you think this is a good pitch? No, it's a crappy song. Oh, okay. So, when, you know, how do you do that? How do you listen objectively to your own material to know if, it, if it's good enough to pitch? It's hard. It, it, it really and truly is hard, but, but what you have to do, you have to put that bar for your own songs as high as anything you hear on the radio or higher. Mm -hmm. and, and part of how you do that, uh, I think, is by studying the, the songs that are out there, the songs that have been recorded. You've got to make you've got to make this a, a science. You, you know, yes, there's a creative side of it as far as the writing goes, but following that up, you have to make it a science. You have to study it. You, you have to know, uh, you know, what kinds of songs Carrie Underwood does, right. what, what she sings about, what she doesn't sing about. And in order to do that, it requires hours and hours and hours of listening. And then when you put on your own song you, that you're thinking about taking into uh, Lisa or to Jim Catino or to Renee Bell for Carrie Underwood, you have to put the bar for that song as high or higher than any of the other stuff that you've heard. And you know, if you, if you don't feel like that your second verse uh, is as strong or stronger than the first, you probably are not ready to take that meeting. Right. It's and it's question. hard. Yeah. It, you know, it's, it's really hard because like Jimmy said, you know, you, you sweat blood, sweat, and tears over this thing. You've spent mm -hmm. hours on it. You've rewritten it. You know, you maybe even at that point have, have full demoed it. Mm -hmm. um, but you have got to, you have got to remove yourself as far as you can from it. Uh, and use that bar <clears throat> that you that that you've used right. in judging everything that you've heard that that artist has recorded, and right. you've got to use that bar for your own song as well. And that's not easy. No, it's not. Um, but one thing that we have here at Nashville Demo Studio is our men our Music Row mentoring program. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I run my stuff by Chip, and Chip's a good friend of mine. So, but his time is valuable, and I. I I really don't, I don't even know the last time I've played a song for you. No, it's been a while. You know? um, it's been a while. And it's just because you're, you've, you're so busy with producing and doing the other mentor stuff. Um, we've put a program together like no other, in my opinion. There, there isn't, there's, there's not no, anywhere else in town where, where you've got a choice of five different mentors to listen to your songs, to, in their opinion, tell you what's right with them, what's wrong with them, how to make them better. There's no place else in town you can do that. Well, NSAI, I know, has has their critiques, right. but that's a different thing than being able to actually talk to somebody on the phone about get your song, Skype or, or get on person. Skype, or, or sit down with that person and and sit face to face with them and talk about your songs. There's, no, there's nowhere else where you can do that. And, and one of the things that makes our mentoring program a little different, you know, and I'm not just trying to plug, you know, one of our services, but Chip and I developed this program with you guys in mind. One of the things that, that unsigned writers want, besides opinions, is access. Mm -hmm. And the mentors that we have are active participants in the music industry on Music Row. We've got Chip who plugs. We've got Cheryl Blackman, who is Song Plugger of the Year, I don't know how exactly. many years in a row. Indie Song Plugger, um, right. We have Tim Hunsey, who is uh, BMG. BMG. We have 
uh, Lynn Gann, who is a partner, creative partner, and runs Full Circle Music Publishing. They've got like for the top 10 hits right now. He's available to you, Mike Sebastian at Olay. Olay. Mm -hmm. um, who else do we have? <laughs> uh, did you say Steve Block? Oh, Steve Block, who works with Doug Johnson at Curb. These guys, you can sit down with them and for an hour, and here's the cool thing, they'll listen to your songs prior to your mentoring exactly. session, so that no time is wasted on just listening to songs. They already know your songs going into it, and you they give you career advice, you can ask them anything you want about the music industry. And hey, you know what? It's it's an opportunity to pitch to someone on the row as well. It is. It is. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had a song, one song so far, picked up on a single song contract through that mentoring program. So, um, and that goes back to relationships, you know. And, and yeah, it is a paid service, but these people are taking time away from their jobs to come do this. So you have to pay them. Um, but... That relationship can can start in that mentoring program, and it is an awesome way to get objective opinions, yep. not just from somebody critiquing your song somewhere, but from someone who is on Music Row, who is getting cuts with these big artists, and who are pitching their own catalogs of stuff as a publisher on the row. So they know they're in the trenches. And they're plugged in. They're <clears throat> totally plugged in. You know, I mean, they know... They know, uh, I mean, they, they had a meeting with somebody at, uh, at Sony Records mm -hmm. uh, in the past three or four days. Right. They had a meeting with somebody at Capitol. They had a meeting with somebody at Universal. They, uh, you know, not two years ago, but last week. Right. And, and so they can tell you, uh, if you if you think a song is good for Carrie Underwood, Right. Well, they they can say, well, hey, I just sat with Renee Bell last week, right. <clears throat> and I can tell you, this may be a pretty good song, but it's not what Carrie's doing this time around. It's right. not what they're looking for, and it's not going to get through. Right. Or they can say, you know what, you've got a great start on this, and and I think Carrie would love that, right. uh, or Renee Bell would love that first verse and that chorus. But you've got to go here with the second verse, right. and, and you've got to do this in the bridge to bring it home to make it work. They know. Right. They know. And that's information that, that somebody else may not know, even, even though the other, the other person may be a songwriter or they may be somebody who's had success. Mm -hmm. They're not going to know that inside information right. that you need and want to know. So... If you need an objective opinion, if you want to start meeting people in the row, on the music row, go to our website, I'm sure you're on there now watching it, um, under the Music Row Mentoring Program. Uh, it's an excellent thing, it'll really, really help. And again, these are the people that I play my songs for and get opinions. So, um, and many times pitched to with Steve Walker and stuff. Yeah, so, of course. Um, so that's how do you know what to, to send, but let me ask you this. Now, I know we're a demo studio, so I'm sure everyone's going to think that, you know, uh, that I'm just going to say you have to have demos. But the truth, Chip, the do truth, they have to be demoed? The, the, the truth is <clears throat> that it must be competitive. Right. That's the truth. And unless you are, um, and, unless you are a writer who's having hits right now, Mm -hmm. To sit down and and do a live little garage band guitar vocal is probably not going to be competitive. These people listen to many records all day long. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, Bob DePiro, uh, Craig Wiseman, Jeffrey Steele, Jeffrey demos Steele, all his stuff. Uh, you know, the the A and R people that that hear these demos, the producers, the you know the managers. artists, the managers. Mm -hmm. They're listening to, to record quality, you know, record quality stuff all day long. Your song is going to have to stand up to that. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's going to be your judgment to make. Uh, you know, if, if, you, if you think your song is so great that you can put down a garage band uh, guitar vocal of it and take it in and get it cut, you probably have another thing coming. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you take, if you do get a meeting and the quality of your presentations is not good, I don't care if your songs have potential and could be good, mm -hmm. you're probably not going to get asked back. 
It's like going on a first date with no makeup. It's exact. Done. That's it's exactly right. I mean, it's that's like a, that's a great. It's going a great, on your first date with your hair in rollers and no makeup on. It, it's it's a great analogy. Uh, your presentation, whatever it is, has to stand up to Craig Wiseman, Bob DePiro, Tom Shapiro, Tony Martin, Mark Nessler. Uh, it has to stand up and be in the ballpark with that stuff because if it isn't, in the, in the first place. A lot of these artists that are recording now are young artists, mm -hmm. uh, and I hate to say it, but many of them don't know a good song from a bad song. Right. They, they have to hear it realized. They, they have to hear it as a record. Uh, there are still some, some producers out there who can hear a good guitar vocal mm -hmm. uh, and, and know whether or not it would work for an artist. But eventually, that artist, that artist manager, uh, are going to have to say, yeah, that's something we want this artist right. to do. And I'm just here to tell you, if it doesn't sound like a record, the chances are really good that it ain't going to make it to. And, and I just want to address, I know a lot of you out there don't have your songs demoed because it's expensive to do. Um, but let me just say this. You are endeavoring into a new career. With any that's new exactly career, right. there, there are costs associated with that. Right. If I wanted to be a doctor, I'd have to pay for med school. You know, that's exactly uh, right. if I wanted to be a professional football player, I'd have to buy knee pads and everything else that goes along with that. Go to college. I'd have to go to college. To play college ball. The thing is, is any new career that you are endeavoring to do, you must invest in yourself. And I'm not just that's saying right. this as a studio owner. There is no greater investment to make with your material once it's ready than to professionally record it. Right. Because how awful would it be if you have a great song and the reason it was passed on is because the presentation sucked. Exactly. Because the, vo the vocal was out of tune. Because it was distracting. So <clears throat> it's just one more thing that, you know, I always say when you go into meetings, I have a checklist of no's and try to get rid of all the things that they can say no mm -hmm. to. And if one of those things is it's not demoed, get a demoed, you know? Um, make a budget for yourself, you know? What, you know, how much can I afford to demo this year? You know, if it's a thousand, if I can afford uh, two demos, then I'll right. do that. If I can afford three, I'll do that. Make a budget for yourself, stick to the budget, you know, um, anything, that you can do, and not just in demos, but you know, you might want to invest in joining Taxi. You might want to invest in getting into trade magazines. NSAI. Uh, and um, you might, you'll want to invest into becoming a member of NSAI. All this stuff costs money. We're all aware of that. And I'm also aware the songwriters are broke. I, don't, I mean, many, I'm there with you. But I learned early on, you could, you know, you have to invest in yourself. And, and let me tell you, <clears throat> when you compare the cost of demoing eight to ten songs a year that are ready to be demoed mm -hmm. to moving to Nashville, mm -hmm. uh, waitressing or working in a restaurant from seven at night until four in the morning and having a writer appointment at ten the next morning, mm -hmm. when you weigh the cost of uh, of, of what it costs you to do the demos, to be a member of Taxi, to be a member of NSAI, to be able to do that networking <clears throat> uh, remotely somewhat. Mm -hmm. When you weigh that against what it would cost you to move here and, and the cost on a, possibly a relationship with a wife or a right. significant other, uh, it's really, really very little.